Come on in, grab a seat. There's a few spots up front here. Maybe up here. That's what you get. You show up late in the Lutheran church, you sit in the front. Good to be gathered together. My name is Rob James, blessed to be one of your pastors. Scott Stolberg, our associate pastor, preaching today. Grateful for everybody that makes worship happen. I'm looking at your this week. This is our announcements. Lots to highlight, lots going on. First off, we just want to say it's good to be in worship together. If you're with us online, we're glad you're here. Uh, Comment online, let us know uh, that you're watching so we can say hello to you there. If you're in person, we're glad that you're comfortable, willing, able to be here today. If you would reach out your right hand or your left hand and grab one of those attendance cards sitting in front of you. We need you to fill that out. We'll drop those in the basket on our way out of worship. But that lets us know not just who's here, but who's missing. If this is your first time to Our Saviors, or maybe it's been a while, we want to say we're really glad you're here today. If it's your first time, you can connect the word welcome to 815-205-1099. That's a way for us to just simply connect with you. Don't worry, we won't ask for your social security number and checking deposit for at least two weeks. Uh, But it's just a way for us to connect and and see how we can help you become a part of our Savior's Lutheran Church. So go ahead and fill out those attendance cards or send us a text. Our rally day, our fall kickoff is coming soon, Uh, very soon, September 12th. So not next week, but the week after uh, is our rally day, and that is our schedule change day. How many of you wish we were keeping this service at 9 o'clock? Yep, too bad. Uh, So we're going to have 8.30 will be our primarily organ-led service. Then we'll have 945 Sunday School for our two-year-olds through fifth graders. That'll be up in the bridge. And so you'll still come in through the main door, but parents, you can grab donuts and then find your way up to the bridge. We'll have volunteers showing you which direction to go. So 945 to 1025 for Sunday school, and then we'll have a 1030 service. That'll be primarily our band-led service, but we'll be mixing it up between both services here and there. So that day also plan on an open house day. I don't know if you've heard the word, but we swapped our library and our nursery. Our operations guys did a fabulous job making that change. Our atrium area is getting a makeover this week. Uh, Playtown Preschool upstairs, if you've never seen our preschool, we'll have that open so you can go and meet Miss Amy, our director, and see Playtown, and just lots of other things, screens and some new rooms, so plan on coming and checking that out. We're going to keep wearing masks indoors while we're told that we should. We're going to keep practicing physical distancing. Thanks to our caring and fellowship and operations teams, we're going to keep doing fellowship outside on Sunday mornings as long as we can. Kind of amazing. Yes, the donuts melt in this heat, but uh, kind of amazing that we've had good weather otherwise every Sunday since we started that. So grateful for all the volunteers that do that. Our caring and fellowship team would love more volunteers to simply help serve, and so there's a sign-up sheet right outside the door that you can sign up to to help serve coffee and donuts on a Sunday. Confirmation kicks off this coming Wednesday with the pool and pizza party at Ann and I's home, and so we invite all of our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders to come to that, and then our trainings are the Saturday and next Wednesday. We offer different options for confirmation, so make sure you talk to Pastor Scott about what you want to do for confirmation for any 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Choir, our adult choir, will begin next Wednesday, September 8th, 7 o'clock. We'll be using the worship center instead of the choir room, and we'll be singing in masks. So anyone that's interested in being a part of the choir, you can come join Paula Mowbray, our director of worship and music, and your other choir members for that. Our children and youth choir will hold off until we're able to do that safely. So we'll uh, get that going as soon as we possibly can. Our mission of the month is our partnership with Johnson Elementary. This Tuesday night, we're going to do a cookout for their back-to-school night. We're going to grill 700 hot dogs, uh, and then we're going to pack those up with the chips and the cookies and the waters and hand them to go bags. Since we can't, unfortunately, sit and gather around a table, we're going to give all the students and their families a meal to go. And so we're still looking for volunteers, either from 4 to 6 or 5 to 7. You can simply just email or call the office and let us know if you want to take either of those shifts this Tuesday. Any funds that go to our mission of the month will go first to pay for that meal. Any leftover, uh, Amber Johnson, our principal, 
has told us that they need new headphones, and so we're going to help buy new headphones in the building with any leftover funds. So as always, Mission of the Month, you can give in a check or online. Just des make sure you designate that as Mission of the Month for August. Did I say July? I think I said July. None of you are listening anymore anyway, are you? I've talked too long. Whew, I don't know what we're going to do when we get busy, because this isn't even busy yet. But uh, today is a fifth Sunday. Whenever there is a fifth Sunday, uh, we have a healing station available. And so after you come forward for communion, all are welcome for communion, by the way. After you come forward and receive the wafer and then the cup, then there will be someone waiting there. If you choose, they will say a little healing prayer as they anoint your forehead with oil. And so if you would like that, you can stop and receive that. If not, you can just scoop past a line, drop your cups in the basket, and head back to your seat. Those of you online, feel free to send us a message, and we'd be happy to pray with you uh, via Messenger on Facebook. Lots of other stuff, so make sure you read all of your this week. For now, I invite you to open your bulletin and stand as we worship together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it but keep the commandments of the Lord your God for which I am charging you. You must obey them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statues, will say, surely this is a great nation, is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget these things that your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Word of God, word of life. We read responsibly from Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second reading is from the book of James, first chapter, beginning with verse 17. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, They are like those that look at themselves in a mirror. 
for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Word of God, word of life. it's on it is on so I know there's some children that are in the way back and I really want you to come because I have a special treat for you too come on up here gather around thanks Bryce I know they're very brave when you guys leave you can take a bulletin and a crayon with you but you can do that at the end so I've got some things up here, and so nowadays, we've always been concerned about our hands. Can you look at your hands? Does everybody have pretty clean hands? We have hand sanitizer when you come in here. So we've got some white, sweet people that have been really keeping their hands clean because of COVID, but we should always keep our hands clean. So I've got some wipes. I've got some hand sanitizer. I use this a lot. I even have this in my car. I use it at the gas station, too. You guys use hand sanitizer a lot? Yeah. We're trying to keep everything clean, germ-free. Have you ever thought about keeping your mouths clean, keeping our hearts clean? How can we keep our hearts clean, do you know? Hmm. Well, let's, yes, Addie. You want to tell me? How can you keep your heart clean? Oh, we can talk to God, huh? We can pray. Well, today we're hearing about some words, some Pharisees were talking. And so I'm going to see it when I open up my Bible. The Bible tells us that the Pharisees who came to Jesus, they liked to have some bossy rules. Do you guys have rules at home? Yeah. I've been kind of convicted this week because, you know what? I have some bossy rules. And God's convicted me that maybe I need to be a little more generous with my bossy rules. <laughs> so, but rules are good. They keep us safe and they keep us protected by those germs. But the Bible tells us that the disciples were there the, talking to Jesus, or the Pharisees were talking to Jesus, and they noticed some of the disciples were eating without washing their hands. Did you guys eat without washing your hands? You probably wash your hands before you eat, right? Yeah. But they, they were washing, and they told Jesus, why don't they follow our rules? And Jesus responded and said, you bunch of phonies. Isaiah must have been talking about you when he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Then Jesus called all the people to gather around him. So like all these people here, gather around us and listen. It's not what goes into your body by eating the food, but it's what comes out that makes you unclean. It's the bad words that we use. It's what comes out of our hearts. Our hearts are what sometimes, our bad hearts are what the words that come out. So I have an experiment for us. I'm going to put this paper right here. Guess what I brought? What's that? Toothpaste. I clean my mouth every morning with toothpaste and a couple more times during the day. So this is kind of going to represent my mouth or our mouth. Sometimes when I get a little mad or angry, I'm going to... Those are my words. Now, I just said something mad and maybe not very kind to somebody. Can I take that back? Do you think I can take this and put it back in here? It would be easy or hard to do? Pretty much impossible unless I took the whole thing out and like siphoned it back in there. So I really like this experiment because it always helps me to remember when I brush my teeth 
that what comes out of my mouth can hurt people. And God wants our words, and he wants us to be slow to anger. He wants us to be kind and loving. Remember, I have my shirt on here. It says, be kind. He wants all of us to watch what we say and then look and examine our hearts. Because what comes out of our mouths starts right here in our hearts. So I'm going to give everybody a toothpaste before when you go. And when you brush your teeth or when you lay that there and think about it, I want you to think about the words that come out of us. And you know how we can help with that when they come out and we can't put them back? We can pray. So let's pray. Can you open your hands? Dear God, we thank you for always being with us. We thank you for forgiving us when we say unkind things, when we get angry. But help us, Lord, to restrain ourselves, to stop us from those unkind things, those angry moments. Help our hearts, Lord, to be true and pure with you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm going to leave you with a song, because we sang this a couple weeks ago. Remember, oh, be careful, little. We're going to say mouth today. So I hope everybody joins with us today. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Thank you for coming up. You can take one of these to remind you. And don't forget to take your bulletin, too. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of the disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile the person. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Here in our text today is another time when Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees and the scribes. It seems that Jesus is never too excited to see the Pharisees and the scribes, but they are continually ready to see if they can corner Jesus into saying something that will prove him to be a heretic. And so end his connection with the people that follow him. So in the reading today, we hear how the Pharisees and the scribes are observing 
that some of the disciples are eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. It's important to understand that the Pharisees and the scribes are not simply unhappy that there are people that are eating without washing their hands. It goes much deeper for these Pharisees and scribes. See, the Pharisees and scribes are keepers of the law. And these keepers of the law are very connected and concerned that the holy will become unclean or defiled if they come in contact with each other. In his exegetical notes, uh, Brian Stofferton says this. He says, in Hebrew thought, something was secular or common or ordinary. And that had the power to make ordinary or to defile those things or people that were holy. A person or thing that had been so defiled could, through ritual washing, then be restored, uh, could restore the common or defiled thing or person back to its holy status. So if you remember the mindset of these Pharisees and scribes, you begin to understand just how and what they were doing in questioning Jesus was simply a way of checking to see if their religious world was being put into a situation that might cause problems. They had honest intentions. They were trying to protect their religious ways, the way they had been teaching each other as well as the way they had been taught. So the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Now in his book, The Gospel According to Mark, James Edwards reminds us, those who dismiss such questions as trivial betray a fundamental misunderstanding of the whole Pharisaic enterprise, which is to sanctify, sanctify all life. That's what the Pharisees and scribes were doing. They wanted to sanctify all life. The tradition of the elders was not an attempt to bury the commands of God in trivia, but to apply the Torah in every facet of life. The suspicion here as earlier is that Jesus' behavior conveys, at least to others, disrespect for the law, threatening the whole Pharisee construction, and in their view, the Jewish way of life. This is also noted in a book by Ben Witherington, The Gospel of Mark, a socio-rhetorical commentary. I'm sure you're going to run right out and grab that book. He says, in order to understand the Pharisees, one must recognize that they attempted to apply the Levitical laws for the cleanliness of priests to everyone. They, in a sense, believed in a real priesthood of all believers, and therefore all Jews were called to priestly cleanliness. These religious leaders are asking real questions that attempts to point to a corruption of the divine law that has been observed for generations. And so they ask, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? In other words, why don't you do things the way we do them, the way we have always done things? Why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with unwashed hands, therefore making everything unholy? Now Jesus speaks. Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. 
you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Now, why would Jesus say this? Especially to those that are trying to keep the divine law of the ancestors. Doesn't Jesus understand how important these laws are in keeping the religious practices present among the people? Now Jesus continues, disclosing what the real issue is here. The text reveals, then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Jesus helps us to recognize here that we are the problem, not the laws that are kept or not kept. No, we are the problem. When we, God's people, use our time and efforts to point out what others are doing wrong, then it is not what others are doing wrong that is evil, it is what we're doing wrong that is evil. I have four more pages. <laughs> Just let you know. It's, it's going to be a while. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. Matthew 7. Do not judge and do not condemn. That's from Luke. How can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? It's from Luke. All these evil things come from within, from the human heart, and they defile a person. These Pharisees and scribes believed that they were looking out for their religion, and they were. But they were not looking out for what God was doing in Jesus Christ. There is a distinct difference between what religion is doing and what God is doing in Jesus Christ. There are some words from a 20th century author I'd like to share with you, Robert Farrar Capon, from an article he wrote in 1989, provocatively titled, In Us We Trust, from a magazine called The Door. They are hard words to hear, but I think they are important words to hear. Capon writes, Whatever the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, it is not a religion. It is, in fact, the announcement of the end of religion. And what is religion? It's the human race's age-long preoccupation with the notion that there is something we can do or should do to set ourselves right with God, or to get God to be nice, or to make the universe go more smoothly. He goes on to say, religion in short is an attempt at control, a kind of conjuring, which while it aims at desirable results, res resorts to devices which in fact do not and never have produced such results, all of which is neatly summed up in the epistle to the Hebrews, and that says, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats or orthodox opinions or long prayers or proper behavior, like washing your hands the right way, can take away sins. Only Jesus does that. And Jesus does it by one simple fact. He announces in his death and resurrection that whatever it was that religion ever tried to do or ever would do, he, Jesus, accomplished 
once and for all. God's way is not our way. Thank God. God's way is a gift, and that gift is grace. And it's found in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If we recognize that to follow Jesus is to be cruciformed, that is, to always see others, even scripture, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, then we begin to invite the truth of God into our lives. In word and sacrament, we die to our sinful self each day, asking God to be present with us. You see, being cruciformed also means that we see others through the lens of Jesus Christ and not through the sin-stained eyes that are part of who we are alone as human beings. The question is, will you continue to trust your own inner understanding of what you believe is right and wrong? Or will you hear the greatest commandment of God, and that is the word of God in Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, the only answer to evil and sin. Evil and sin that dwells inside each one of us. Jesus Christ, who proclaims, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and that you shall love your neighbors, you love yourself. Let's try that again. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and mind, and? And so we pray. Good and gracious God, you have given us a birth by the word of truth so that we would become a kind of first fruits of all your creatures. Help us to keep our minds from casting judgment on others. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please rise as you're able. Let us profess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole of creation. The plants and the animals have their habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need, for support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothes, and stability for daily life. We especially pray for Gert, Fred, Gary, Stephanie, Dave, Marjorie, Chris, Bob, Nancy, Genevieve, Judy, Lee, Carol, Dolores, Sharon, Stephanie, Marlon, Wendy, Ron, Denise. We also pray for the families and friends of our Savior's Lutheran Church. Phyllis, Mallory, Carol, Oliver, Randall, Calvin, Don, Greg, Jacob, Tim, Darren, Emily, Spring, Ashley, Elijah, Richard, Amber, Tamara, Steve. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed who show us how to honor God with our heart. Inspire us by their example and renew our faith, trusting that we will be united with them in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With a smile under your mask and a peace sign on your hands, turn to your neighbors and share the peace of Christ.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, with the choir of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus gathered with the disciples in that upper room. They gathered around the table, around that meal. Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God for the gift that had been provided, and then broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the meal, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks for the gift, and then said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you that are at home, if you've got elements of bread and wine or juice available, we invite you to this holy sacrament. Those here, you'll wait till ushers dismiss you. You'll receive the wafer and eat the wafer, and then you'll take your own cup of wine on the outside or grape juice in the middle of the trays. Again, today being a fifth Sunday, we have an anointing prayer, a healing prayer to offer up to those who would like to stop. After you receive the wine, uh, go down a few feet. There'll be someone there waiting to just say a little prayer and anoint you with oil. If you'd like to choose to skip that, you can just walk by, pass your cups in the basket and return to your seats. All are welcome. Come and eat and drink.
I invite you to stand as you're able. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we've received from your table more than we could ever ask as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. And the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. That's like the best we've done, yeah? Yeah.
Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice in it. We go out into the world to stay cool somewhere and rejoice in God's good world. One highlight I didn't lift up earlier, our grief and loss support group under Johanna Backer and the wonderful Kathy Stim got started this week. They're not going to meet this week, but then we'll wrap that up on September 8th, the one o'clock on Wednesday. Not too late to join this Bible study portion as we then move into what does an ongoing grief group look like here at Our Savior. So you can check out that information, all the rest in this week, and join us for Johnson Elementary Cookout on Tuesday night. The donuts are melting, so I'm going to be quiet. We're going to immediately leave and go enjoy donuts and coffee outside. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.